Hello my legend tripping tribe. Today we are going to Devil's Gate Dam, otherwise known as the portal to hell. You're probably wondering why would you want to go to the gates or portal to hell, especially with your children. One of the reasons is it's one of the best urban exploration places in Los Angeles area, uh, even though it's Pasadena technically. That's Lucy, or otherwise known as Critter. If we go back in time just a little bit, there are some urban legends surrounding this place, one of which involves heavy doses of a guy who was the co-founder of Jet Propulsion Laboratories named Jack Parsons, and he was somehow coupled with founder L. Ron Hubbard. You know, the Scientology guy? The one that Leah Remini is pretty much after? Well, L. Ron Hubbard's dead, of course, but his legacy remains. Also, the infamous occultist, Aleister Crowley, said that he named it one of the seven portals to hell. Is it really? Well, let's go find out. But one thing I did want to mention, we had to pull over and do this over today, this intro, because yesterday I didn't have any audio. So today, we just happened to be in the neighborhood of a place where I made a video before called the Ghosts of Sand Canyon. And right over here is where supposedly a girl and a guy had crashed after a prom. To give you some reference, I'm standing in front of the tree that supposedly the car hit. Her ghost is supposed to haunt this area and the girl is supposed to walk around trying to get into cars looking for help. All right, hey, let's rewind and go to the gates of hell. Okay, I realized that the external mic that I brought doesn't work for some reason. I cannot get it to work. So I'm using the built-in mic on this camera. It's gonna be noisy. I'm gonna do the best I can with it. Our story begins in the 1940s when a group of occultists became interested in the area and attempted rituals intended to open a portal to hell. Be careful. The group included rocket scientist Jack Parsons, who was a JPL founder and a follower of Aleister Crowley's Thelema, and L. Ron Hubbard. Like I said, gonna be noisy, so I'm gonna talk really loud, but we're going down this huge um, array of steps. Their goal was to bring forth a moon child, which they hoped would be an antichrist figure that would lead a Thelemic revolution. I also forgot an ND filter, so I'm at like F22, I'm trying to keep it from being overexposed. Every time I think I have everything I need, I realize I walked out with things I don't need and needing things I do need. Oh well. How is the stave on this camera? Can we get through? Dad, a huge what? Ladder! This moves. And we can get in there. You can't do it. You can do it. Dad, how are you even gonna get to? You think you can do it, Lucy? Alright, so we're gonna try we're gonna try this. Try this. Alright, so this is the next series of steps. It's a little bit scary, I must say. But are you coming down first? Turn your walkie on. I want you to come. Yeah, why don't you come up and guide her? What? It come up a little bit and guide the other ski. Okay. So we're in front of the gates of hell and there's no way into the gates. So like we want to go in but we can't go in. So supposedly there's been a couple of missing kids here, one in the 50s and one in the 60s. I'll get into that a little bit later. I think I can probably dig up some pictures of them. 
they went missing. One was on a bike. I don't know how you'd ride a bike around here. And look at these rocks. Maybe that was the problem. But what mysteries this place might hold. Jack Parsons and L. Ron Hubbard quickly became friends and fenced together, discussed magic together, and even performed magical rituals together. Hubbard eventually moved into Parsons' mansion. By day, Parsons built rockets for the government. By night, he emerged from a coffin to perform sex magic with his followers. You have to understand that rocketry research in the early parts of Parsons' life, to the public at large, that stuff was pure science fiction. And in established scientific circles, it was even worse. That It was synonymous with the ridiculous and the far-fetched. In 1952, Parsons died at the age of 37 in a home laboratory explosion that attracted national media attention. The police ruled it as an accident, but many associates suspected suicide or murder. All right, let's start being very careful about going across these rocks, okay? Let me go first. really going to test the bounds of this uh, in-body camera stabilization on the Olympus right about now. Whoa. Whoa, this is cool back here. Look at this. Whoa, so crazy. Oh, this is sick. I still have you, Jude? Yes. This place back here is really, really cool. You're going to need to check it out. Hey, June. Yeah? There's like orange leaves, like you can like, you can like play in them and it's like all cool. Yeah, this place, it's nice and cool back here. Oh, you can walk along the side of the dam. Wow, so what's this over here? Oddly enough, Jack Parsons and I have a few things in common. Parsons seemed devoted to reconciling opposites, smashing together the technical and the spiritual, like the white lab coat and the black robe, fact and fiction, science and magic, and I kind of do too. Science and spirituality, albeit for good or evil, have common ground somehow and some way. <laughs> do I look really ugly right now? Really spooky? Look at this, Lucy. There's a bunch of water. Where? This is where we were before. See? Right over there? That's where we were before. Looks like somebody swept this up, but then left it here. <laughs> Maybe they made a little fire. Lucy, go! Grab on that corner! Grab on that corner! There you go! Yay! <laughs> wow, so we're way up here now. And it's pretty crazy up okay, here. Uh, it, it, <laughs> we're up at the Roman Colosseum. <laughs> That's what it kind of puts you in the mind of. I'm so worried about these guys constantly. <laughs> well, be careful, Lucy. I don't want you to slide all the way down there, okay? So don't be jumping on anything I can't Did see. Oh! <gasps> 
Parsons was accused of seducing Aerojet secretaries by inviting them back to his mansion where debauchery, drugs, and fire dancing ruled. He met visiting scientists at his front door with a snake curled around his shoulders and would treat the Jet Propulsion Laboratory as if it was his own private playground. Somebody didn't like their TV. I think Wendy O. Williams was here. Wow, that's a long staircase. Kind of reminds me of the staircase in The Exorcist. matted my hair is right now. I am sweating. Wow. You guys, you guys good? Oh, Lucy. <laughs> she wants to climb everything. It's what? Another long series of steps. What do you want to do? Slide down this. You want to slide down this? Yeah, because it's cold. No, well, you're not going to slide down there. Yeah, I yeah. am. No, that's a no. 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 Parsons and his group called the Suicide Squad co-founded Jet Propulsion Laboratories and continued to study of his one-time backyard playthings. At the same time as he was reaching his professional peak, he also found himself moving up the ranks of OTO, corresponding with the aged Aleister Crowley in England, and eventually becoming the group's leader on the West Coast. The gates of hell are closed, so the damned shall walk the earth. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.